Good to be back on a Saturday night in the ACC. And away we go. Five yards deep, tripped up, spun down. And a 13-yard return by Berkeley. Maurice Berkeley set up Louisville with first and 10. Poor starting field position. Our first look for us at Malik Cunningham. Well, I look for Malik Cunningham early to set the tone for this offense. I think he needs to sit back in the pocket, and it starts with his offensive line. When you talk about offensive line, you want guys that can protect your quarterback, so they have to protect him, keep him upright in this ball game. And Hassan Hall had that fumble on fourth down on the option play against Ole Miss late in the first half Monday night. Jalen Mitchell will be the starting running back tonight. And Mitchell in the first play from scrimmage across the 15. And a gain of four, maybe five, the stop by Ryan Jackson. And when you talk about this Louisville offensive line, they had a tough time in the first half in that ball game last week against Ole Miss. So you want to set the tone. You want to run the ball effectively, run the ball in the gut of this Eastern Kentucky defense. Show them that you're going to control the line of scrimmage early. And they have a size advantage up front, as you would expect, Power 5 versus FCS. Near side scamper upended near the 20. That'll bring up third down quickly after gain of three. That Louisville offensive line anchoring the middle. You got 317, 315, 313 across. Should be able to push the pile with the A-gap, right? Well, when you're talking about offensive linemen, I want guys that eat with their hands. I don't want guys that eat with forks and spoons. I want guys <laughs> that are grimy and want to get down and dirty. Eat with their hands. I love it. I know exactly what you mean. Put the utensils aside. We're not here for it. <laughs> Here's Cunningham, surveys, fires, passes caught. And the reception by Braden Smith. Needed three, he'll gain four. That'll move the chains, the tackle by Bailey. And I want you to watch the right tackle number 56. He's getting beat, but watch him set down. If you watch him, this is what you look for from your offensive lineman. Keep going, keep grinding, dump him down. That is what I call handlebars. I love that on that play. A great job blocking and a good job getting the first down by Malik Cunningham, finding the open receiver. We will see a little three-man front tonight from EKU. They'll show three with their hand in the dirt here. Rushing off the edge. Udom. He'll back out of there. Cunningham. Fires a strike. And on first down, they'll move the sticks once again. Jordan Watkins makes the play. And a good job by Cunningham. He got flushed out of the pocket because Renato, Renato Brown did not get enough push on the outside. But what Cunningham did on that play was look down the field when he escaped the pocket and was able to get the first down. Got Marshawn Ford in the backfield joining Mitchell. Former walk on a tight end. He's been electric down the field in the passing game the last two seasons. Mitchell to the edge with a crease. No side swipe a defender, a gain of four. That was Kyle Bailey that brought him down to the turf. And right now, you see the Eastern Kentucky defenders playing up the field. They're getting penetration. The Louisville offensive line has to do a better job with their sets. They have to have a wide base. You need to get inside hands. You cannot block an individual. I don't care how much stronger you are when you don't have a wide base. Backside pressure. Cunningham off the pump fake. Heaves one deep. Has a man incomplete. Overshot his intended target. That was Tyler Harrell. And it grazed the very tips of his fingers on that play. Well, Eastern Kentucky is getting immediate pressure on Cunningham. He has not been comfortable passing the football. I've yet to see him be able to sit in the pocket with the pocket around him and pass the ball. He's had to escape the pocket or step up in the pocket. The tackles have to give him width in the pocket, and the guards in the center have to be stout at the point of attack and not allow penetration in his face. Opening possession of the night. Big third down for Louisville. Cunningham, ball came out. Who has it? Colonels think they jumped on it. They may have. And this is what we've seen early from this Eastern Kentucky defense. Pressure, pressure, pressure. 
the offensive linemen are not doing a good job of fighting at the point of attack. Shane Burks forced the fumble. Cards jump on top of it. Fortunate not to turn it over there for us. I look at the middle of the offensive line. You see pressure coming right in his face immediately. Right there, you've got the guard. The guards in the center, they have to be stopped. You've got a punch. Too much catching is going on right there in the center of that offensive line. You've got a punch. You've got to have a wide base. And when those defensive linemen try to move around you, you've got to be able to take a power step and take them where they're going to allow the quarterback to have space to maneuver in the backfield. An even start for Louisville here at home. Mark Bassett, good performance Monday night. And here comes Matt Wilcox. Stopped at the 35. EKU will get it. Their first touch of the football coming up after our first break. We're scoreless here in the Derby. Opportunity here for EKU on the road. Well, they've got to feel confident right now with what the defensive line was able to do as far as getting pressure on the Louisville offense. First hand off to Hewitt. Transfer from Purdue. Barrels his way ahead to the 41-yard line. So a gain of five on first down and a good start for the Colonels. And this is what the coaching staff talked to us about, Roy. They want to establish the running game. They feel like if they can get their running game going, that will open up opportunities for them to go vertical down the field. Hewitt scored three times last week in the road win at Western Carolina. Different animal, obviously, tonight for 25 and white. Coming off his first career start. Movement up front, offsides, and a free play for McKinney. He knows it. Heaves it deep. Has a man. Swiped away at the last second. Mo Edwards, the intended receiver. And not what you want to see early, a lack of discipline by the defensive linemen. Coaches get extremely irritated. With Defense that. number 97. Five-yard penalty. Results to the foul is the first down. That was Gelati, the guilty party at left tackle. Our referee tonight. Riley Johnson, Louisville fans in the house. Too early to be concerned just yet after what happened Monday night. A lot of football left to be played, obviously, tonight, but a good start for the Colonels nonetheless. The offsides needs a first down. McKinney with time steps up, and fires it incomplete. Wilcox, the intended receiver, and he was blanketed by Trey Clark. A couple of new starting cornerbacks for the Ville tonight, Clark and Greedy Vance, after Chandler Jones kind of had his eyes in the wrong place at the wrong time Monday night against Ole Miss. Of course, a lot of teams going to struggle against the Rebels offense this year, we think. Well, you see that eye candy, and you want to jump at it. You want to make the big play, but you've got to make the play. And making the play sometimes means staying at home and playing assignment football. Hewitt hit hard behind the line. He'll tumble forward. And Yasir Abdullah stopped him for no game. And Yasir Abdullah, if you go back to last week's game, he flashed throughout the ball game. You see him right here crashing down the line of scrimmage. He's going, he's playing the football. He's not looking at the eye candy. One thing I noticed about him last week, he flashed all game long. Now, he didn't make a whole bunch of tackles, but he disrupted plays with his ability and his quickness to get inside and in the backfield. Mo Edwards, bottom of your screen, one of McKinney's favorite targets. Got a touchdown pass last year. McKinney looks his way, flings it incomplete. Edwards got a couple of hands on it. Couldn't reel it in. He was defended by Chandler Jones. And I thought McKinney had a lot more time back there. They only rushed three on that play. You've got eight dropping back into coverage. You've got to allow your receivers to find that open pocket and give you a big target. I thought he threw it prematurely. Your line had the blocking and the protection that you needed. Just take your time. Let your receivers find an open spot. Yeah, it's interesting. Walt Wells, head coach at EKU, told us this week the timing of McKinney is one thing they're trying to kind of settle in on, and it hasn't really happened just yet. Richards gets it away. Braden Smith tracks it down to the 15. Keeps the play alive. There goes four. Flag on the field back at the 14-yard line. We'll check the infraction in this one likely. Coming back is Smith. Got to the edge and had a convoy in a hurry. A 39-yard punt. During the return, illegal block in the back by the return team, number 29 on the return team. Penalty is half the distance to the goal line. First down, timeout. 
Six minutes in. For the Cards football program, you got three games in 12 days, starting Labor Day night against Ole Miss this evening for us against EKU. And then Friday, UCF comes to town. That's not really an easy three teams to prepare for as well when you think about what all these teams like to do. Very difficult to prepare for all three of those ball clubs. And when you look at this ball club for Louisville, they need to win this game. They need to win this game big going into that Friday night battle against UCF. Yeah, Gus Malzahn's down there in the bounce house licking his chops, thinking about getting up here. They got off to a roaring start in the comeback win against Boise State last week. Hand off to Mitchell, who stays on the field after the first possession. And, and twist and turn his way for a gain of two, the stop by Matthew Jackson. And you see early Eastern Kentucky showing that three-man front, eight in the back. So what they're able to do is keep eyes on Malik Cunningham and look at the football and come downhill. Yeah. So those guards and tackles that are getting to the second and third level defenders have to be athletes. They have to keep a wide base. They have to go where the defender's going to be, not where they are, because the majority of the time those defenders are going to be better athletes than they are in open space. Now well, confusion and a timeout will be called for Scott Satterfield's club. Trying to work some guys on the field and a couple of more off. And Malik Cunningham get a quick breather as well. But you mentioned rush three, drop eight. I'll go back to a season ago when Mississippi State, the air raid caught everybody by surprise against LSU in week one. People were thinking, well, Mike Leach's team's just going to pass all over the SEC. The next week against Arkansas, what did the Hogs do? Rush three, drop eight. And that was the kryptonite all season long against that style of offense. I'm not saying it's the same thing here, but Ole Miss utilized that Monday. We knew EKU was going to do it tonight, and that's going to force Malik Cunningham to maybe have to do some things he's not entirely comfortable with right now. And the offensive line have to do their part, and their part is being patient. Their part is looking and knowing, and they have to have some type of signal. When your quarterback escapes the pocket, they have to be able to move with him. That's when they can make plays down the field with those jailbreak opportunities because when you're a defensive player and you see a guy like Malik Cunningham break contain, you know his ability to get up the field. So your natural instinct is to go after him and come downhill, which will open up pockets for him to either pass the football or get down the field if the linemen are blocking for him. Mitchell will get it. Not much blocking going on there. A gain of three, the tackle by Jackson. So third down and medium coming up for the second possession for the Cards. Well, the early surprise has been the lack of the offensive line's ability to get movement at the point of attack. They've got a two-inch arm reach, and they've got a 32-pound advantage from, from the offensive line to the defensive line of Eastern Kentucky. So they've got to do a better job of getting extension, and they've got to do a better job of firing off the football. Third down. Cards one for two on third down so far. EKU showing pressure. They'll drop out of it. In the flat, swing pass is there. That'll be a first down to keep the drive going. And a far side tackle against Mitchell. Give him 17 on the play. The first big play from scrimmage tonight for the Cards. And a good job by the offensive line picking up the blitz on the outside. You see the outside linebacker come on the outside. A good job. And Malik Cunningham set his feet, got the ball to his playmaker, Mitchell. He took one on the sideline, but a great job getting the first down. Cal Bailey missed a tackle that helped spring Mitchell loose. He'll stay on the field. They'll fake it his direction. Time for Cunningham. Another deep shot. Has a man. It's Harold. One-handed grab, and he comes up empty. And working against John Blunt. Harold probably would tell you he feels like he should have caught that one for us. He should have caught it, but when you look at where the pass went, he was coming to the inside. The ball went to the outside. Harold was expecting the ball to come down the middle of the field. But watch the ball fade to the outside. He has to change his body, turn an awkward way to try and get possession of the football. A good attempt by Harold on the outside, but Malik Cunningham could have did a better job of getting the ball more vertical down the field, allowing Harold to run under the football. Mitchell flares out. Heavy pressure for Cunningham. This is where he's at his best. Off the pump fake. Directing traffic. Tripped up short of the 40. It'll bring up third and short. Third down and two. The tackle by Roland Walder after a gain of eight. Third down and two. 
And if he doesn't make that play, Malik Cunningham is going down the field. I thought Cunningham could have passed the ball, but you see right here, he got pressure once again immediately. The left tackle did a poor job of oversetting, which allowed the defender to fight across his face and get an inside move. You cannot overset. You've got to keep your base wide so you can power step back to the inside when a defender makes an inside move. Straight ahead. Mitchell ran into a wall, and I don't think so. EKU was ready and waiting. And it's going to bring up fourth down. The push just hasn't been there up front. T.K. McClendon led the charge. Walt Wells got to be happy with his start on the road tonight. Well, the defensive linemen are firing off first, and usually who makes contact first wins the battle at the point of attack. And right now, defensively, they're winning at the point of attack. You see that inside hands. They're getting pushed right in the middle of the offensive line. You expect between your guards to be your strongest point. Those are the most stout, strong, strongest individuals on your offensive line. That's where you need to get pushed. But it starts with getting a low base and basically bear crawling when you're on a goal line, a short yardage situation. Second empty possession for the cards. A fumble. On the return, I think Louisville may have gotten on top of it. Let's see. Well, Wilcox muffed the punt, and Louisville's got it. Cards recover, and a costly mistake. Marvin Dallas with the fumble recovery for the Bill. Just what the doctor ordered for this Louisville ball club. You've got to squeeze the football. He was looking at the defender. If you call for a fair catch, they cannot touch you. Squeeze the football. Get possession of the football. Don't worry about the defenders coming down the field. Take a shot here. Absolutely. And with the pressure that Eastern Kentucky has been able to get on this Louisville offense with them beating them at the point of attack, I look to sprint Malik Cunningham outside of the pocket to get the ball down the field. It's close. Wilcox had it. I thought for a second that he reestablished possession. And instead, the replay booth confirmed the call on the field. And the right side goes Amari Huggins-Bruce for a nice gain on first down. That'll move the chains. You got my support in that, Roy. I agree to I mean, you with me on that? Replay. It looked like he had possession and was down. And as they rolled over, Dallas was able to rip the football from him. I mean, it was a crafty play by Dallas. Make no mistake about it. Travion Cooley, the new Louisville running back. See if that turnover sparks this offense in the first half for the first time this season. Cooley, a freshman, North Carolina. Right side, makes a couple of EKU defenders miss. Tumbles down to the 11, maybe the 10, give him six on the play. And that was an interesting formation. You've got three wides to the right. You've got a pistol formation, but you also have got a back set to the side of Malik Cunningham. So for the defense, you have to try to decipher where he's going to go with the football because there were so many options for him on that play. Well, Cunningham tried to hand it off in the wrong direction towards the end zone, and he makes it work. Touchdown for Louisville, Malik Cunningham made something out of nothing in that sequence. It counts as six points nonetheless. <laughs> 25 yards in three plays, Malik Cunningham. With the honors for the first score of the night. James Turner on for the point after. And a perfect start for his season, the sophomore. Card strike first, 7 nothing. our new score. And once again, they showed you that formation where it's like a pistol formation, but you've got a, a tight end set to the side. You see all of the ball fakes, so the defenders have to react to that. And when you've got an extreme elite athlete like Cunningham in the backfield with the footwork that he displays, he's able to stop on a dime, cut back across the formation, and then he cuts back again, plants that outside foot, and gets north and south. And once he does that, the speed kicks in, and he's able to get to the end zone. I think the best part of that play it won't be for Scott Satterfield, but I think Cooley goes to the wrong side of, of Cunningham there. And then Cunningham says, wait, I got this. He's on his backside. Cunningham's handed it off the opposite way, and it works. 
And that's a nice spark for this offense. And your average quarterback could not make that play. Those are the plays that you get from guys like Amleek Cunningham. With an, when you have an elite talent in the backfield, that's what you can get. Once again, they want to see him stay calm, stay poised, allow plays to develop. But when you have a broken play and you've got a guy that has the footwork, the speed, and the agility of a Malik Cunningham, they can make something out of nothing. Brock Travelstead sends it deep into the end zone. And EKU will take over its own 25. Don't forget our college football lineup next week on ACC Network. Also the ESPN app. Starting us off at noon, Albany and Syracuse from the Dome, Northwestern and Duke at 4 Eastern, down at Wallace Wade, and in prime time, Carolina still ranked in the top 25. Sam Howell and company trying to get back to their winning ways against arch rival UVA. The Wahoos have had the Tar Heels number in recent years. We'll see if that can continue next Saturday night. And what a scene it will be in Keenan Stadium. What a scene here tonight, Derby City, EKU with possession. After the muff punt and a costly turnover for a team trying to score an upset on the road. Flare it out. Right back to the line of scrimmage goes Matt Wilcox. Give him a gain of one, that'll be about it. And Eastern Kentucky is trying to spread out this Louisville defense. They want to get the ball to their athletes in space and allow them to have one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Dump off. Jaden Smith corrals it. It'll be third down and short. Q Cole with another tackle. That's 12 in red and white tonight. Transfer from Alcorn State. Little tempo here for the Colonels. McKinney. Smith. And he keeps the play alive in the Louisville territory. Some nifty running after the catch. Clark finally ushered him out of bounds, but not before he picked up a big first down. And an interesting tidbit that I'm noticing from the Louisville defense, I think because of last week and their lack of their ability to stop uh, the plays on the outside, you see them giving a big cushion to these wide receivers. Look at the top of your screen. You see the 10-yard the cushion right there. I'm throwing it to the receiver off the line of scrimmage every play until they get up in their faces and jam them off the line of scrimmage. Wilcox stopped at the 35 for go the tackle. So after the 27-yard pitch and catch, EKU on the move for the first time and finding a little bit of rhythm trying to work against this defense of Brian Brown. McKinney, Flats, Smith, third and short. Well, that Louisville secondary is certainly something to watch tonight. You've got transfer safeties making their second start here. And Kendrick Dunnigan. Q Cole. Brian Brown told us yesterday for us he expects more out of those guys tonight. He thinks that we'll see it. Hewitt bottled up and stopped dead in his tracks. And he's going to lose yards. Trey Clark. Met him with a full head of steam. And I don't understand that play. You've got third and two. You throw the ball backwards. I think you throw the ball down the field. You've been successful. They're giving you a five to ten yard cushion on every play. All your guys have to do is take off from the line of scrimmage at the snap count. The defensive backs are turning and running. You would have the first down. I don't like throwing the ball backwards, trying to give your guys eight yards to get two when they only need to get two. Yeah, he lost six on third down two on a backwards pass. We really see that every day. Braden Smith drips back deep to receive this punt from Philip Richards. And they keep it from crossing the goal line. That's the only thing that matters. And no, they did not. Touchback. Punt of 38 yards. Louisville will get it back with a seven-point advantage. Now let's see what Louisville can do on this drive. They had a short field the last time. And Malik Cunningham did what Malik Cunningham does. Let's see if they can get a sustained drive. It starts with those offensive linemen. Once again, I want to see guys that eat with their hands. I don't want to see fork and spoon eaters. I want to see guys get down and dirty at the point of attack. I want to see guys attack off the line of scrimmage. So Malik Cunningham 
Second in school history in rush yards for a quarterback. Second in rushing touchdowns for a quarterback. And, of course, you know who's at the very top of that list. Cunningham's got some work to do. A lot of work to try to catch up with the great Lamar Jackson, the Heisman Trophy winner, current quarterback for Baltimore. Pockets clean this time for three. And Cunningham finally pressured. Floats that one out of bounds. Well, he's trying to find some weapons for his head coach, Scott Satterfield. You go back to last season, you're thinking about 2-2 Atwell. You're thinking about Des Fitzpatrick. You're thinking about JV and Watkins. Those guys are all now trying to make their way at the next level. And about five quarters in, I, th I still think they're kind of searching to find out, okay, who's going to be the guy that steps up and replace these guys? Well, when you've got a ball club that loses 2,280 yards and 17 touchdowns of production, there's a drastic change that takes place. So they've got to find their way and find those playmakers. Spin move by Cooley. Keeps the play going, stopped at the 25. It'll be third and five. He pressed the X button a couple of times there. Worked out okay. But I'm still not seeing the movement that I expected to see at the point of attack from the offensive lineman. And it starts with firing off, getting that extension, getting inside hands on that breastplate. When you get those inside hands, using your two to three, excuse me, three inch extension, height extension, and arm length to get separation and take those defensive linemen where you want them to go. Big play from Malik Cunningham. Cooley drifts out. He was available instead. Post corner route, contact. No whistle, no flag. Amari Huggins Bruce, the intended target. And he's nearly tripped up. Davion Ross was back there for EKU. Nick Cheeley as well. I think that's just incidental contact. Their feet got tangled up. Nothing malicious about it. I think that's a great no call. And I also don't think that was a catchable football. So here comes Mark Bassett once again. 46 ticks of the clock remaining in our first quarter here at Cardinal Stadium. Bassett's had a good start to his season. Jake Smith is going to be launched down to the turf. Oh, that was nasty. Full head of steam. Marvin Dallas, he's become the special team's ace for the card so far for us. Call for the fair catch. Don't be a superhero. Oh! Hello. Uh, Marvin Dallas perhaps making a play for ACC Special Team Player of the Week so far. Absolutely. That's what I call one of those handlebar plays. <laughs> call for the fair catch. You've got guys flying down the field wide open. Don't take unnecessary punishment. But he did hold on to the football. I will give him that. A little golf clap for that. Not, not bad <laughs> for Smith. Now Parker McKinney has completed his last six passing attempts after an 0 for 2 start. All those coming on the last drive. Little jet sweep action. And a gain of two on first down. And digging deep into the depth chart. Jiren Mitchell with the touch of the football. What could be the final play of our first quarter. I think you hit the nail on the head, though. At the line of scrimmage, EKU at this point has been surprisingly strong to keep this a one. Legendary head man with the Colonels. Keandre McClure, the new running back for EKU. Back here at Cardinal Stadium, start of our second quarter. Of course, Connolly, Roy, Philpott, McKinney has to heave one out of bounds. And facing heavy pressure from Monty yeah. Montgomery, who exited the game Monday night with that targeting penalty. They're happy to have seven back this evening. I think Seven's happy to be back. You see him getting immediate pressure. They did some stunts from the middle of that defense, and that's what you have to do. You've got an offensive line that's been doing a pretty good job of protecting the quarterback. You've got to put some trickery in there. You've got to make those guys think. Show them a different pre-snap read than what you're going to bring when the ball is snapped. Third down and eight. Big play of the game so far. Muff punt. Louisville cashed in in three plays. Grab this early 7-0 lead. Mo Edwards juggling reception has a first down upended and sent down hard. He needed eight. He'll gain nine. Duncan with the tackle. And a great job by Parker McKinney because they brought more rushers than the offensive linemen to block. For actually, excuse me, they brought more defenders than the offensive linemen they had to block. So what you have to do if you're the quarterback, you've got to go with your hot read. Tucker Schroeder, the starter at left tackle, the injured Colonel. 
give you an update when we come back. Oh, just one. Jake from State Farm, it's the least I can do. You really did me a solid with that, uh, Maya markdown on my insurance. Here's the deal, Maya. State Farm offers everyone surprisingly great rates. <gasps> right. No, really, there are no markdowns, just great rates. Pull around back in 20 minutes. I'll hook you up with the good parts. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. We raise the bar on bar food with sandwiches, tenders, and burgers. There's more where this <laughs> came from. To the greatest of all times. At Carvana, we treat every customer like we would treat our own moms. With care and respect. To us, the little things are the big things. Which is why we do everything in our power to make buying a car an unforgettable experience. Happy birthday. Thank you. We treat every customer like we would treat our own moms. Hey, mom. Because that's what they deserve. Superhero to help save the planet. Small decisions make a world of difference. IKEA. Well, look at this. New Zing Zang Ready to Drink Cocktails. The legendary taste of America's number one Bloody Mary mix. Crafted with seven vegetable juices, bold spices, Worcestershire, and vodka. The legendary Zing Zang Margarita. All natural key lime, grapefruit, 100% blue agave, tequila included. Introducing new Zing Zang Ready to Drink Cocktails. Legendary drinks, ready to enjoy anywhere. Are you ready? Tucker Schroeder went straight into the medical tent on the EKU sideline. Howard Watkins Jr. checked in. In his absence, and play action for McKinney on first down, and well, that's a play that Mo Edwards got to come up with for us. And Mo Edwards was trying to make a play before he had possession of the football. He saw the defender coming up. He was looking where he was going to turn to try to get up the field. I understand what his thinking processes are, but you've got to squeeze that football, get possession before you make a play. Kenny eight for his first 12, but only 48 yards to show for it. Ground game hasn't been there for the Colonels. EKU playing in a hybrid league this season. They call it the AQ7. It's a combination of New teams in the A-Sun and the WAC. The winner of that hybrid conference will clinch a spot in the FCS playoffs come December. That pass going to be intercepted. Picked off. The coverage was there. Trey Clark, first interception of the season. And the sophomore out of Richmond, Virginia, comes up big there. And it all starts with the right tackle, not getting good protection on the outside. And you saw McKinney let the ball go prematurely. And that was an easy pick for this Louisville defense. Secondary under the spotlight after Monday night. A good start here tonight after the fact in full force. And for Louisville, this was a team didn't win as many games as they hoped to in Scott Satterfield's second campaign. You go back, you look at the losses for us. You got four by a touchdown or less. So, I mean, they came close in some pretty big matchups, including that road setback in South Bend a season ago. Well, that's something to hang your hat on if you're in Louisville. You look at those games and you say those are games that we could have and should have won, and those are the games that we want to win this season. We want to be on the other side yeah. of that stat. Not easy to do as Jalen Mitchell checks back in the backfield for the cards. I think a lot of people's expectations probably got out of whack going back to last season because year number one, Coach Sat, they win eight games. Nobody really thought they were going to win more than two or three. Dealing with COVID, you don't have spring ball, a lot of things in flux as Marshawn Ford grabs a reception. And you have to think also with this fan base, you're coming off those Lamar Jackson years, the highest control for oh, man. year, and I thought he should have won it the, the year after he won it. He had better stats and a better season. 
He's been pretty good in the NFL so far, right? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, MVP, getting it done. Pretty decent player to go at the end of the draft, at the end of the first round. Of well, you know, I mean, a lot of people are thinking, is the skill set going to translate? And you know what? Not only has it translated, it's kind of transformed the quarterback position long term. Justin Marshall, first catch. On third and short, he'll move the chains, keep the drive going. He shoved Bailey out of bounds in the process. And it looks like this Louisville offense is getting into a rhythm now. now Malik Cunningham going back to the offseason, one of the areas they really looked at his game up close. Pocket presence. I think maybe he was thinking about it too much in that first half last week. Just back on Monday night. At the short turnaround. He settled down nicely. Rifles a shot for another first down to Braden Smith here. Now Eastern Kentucky has to make a decision. They're going with that three-man front, but they are not getting pressure on Malik Cunningham. He's able to sit back, go through his progressions, find the open receiver. I think they've got to bring an extra defender, try to get some pressure on Cunningham, because if you don't, he'll sit back there and pick you apart. Pockets clean, Cunningham all night to survey. Down the field, Watkins is there. Can't reel it in, double coverage. Shoved out of bounds, no penalty flag. Davion Ross in coverage did a nice job to blanket him that time. And a good job by the offensive line. They brought five defenders on that play, but they gave him time to go down the field. I thought this could have been a penalty because the defender never turned around to locate the football. He played through the receiver. A little face guarding action there. Was that pass catchable sailing out of bounds? Yeah, probably was. And the fact that he never turned around, I thought gave him the opportunity to throw the flag on that play. You did play on offense in college, right? <laughs> San Hall, first touch. Mentioned the fumble on fourth down. First half against Ole Miss Monday. Yeah, no. Junior from the ATL. No gain on the play. It'll bring up third and ten. And Louisville is yet to establish a rushing attack against this defensive line from Eastern Kentucky. Now, the offensive line is doing a better job of pass blocking, but they still are not being able to move those defenders off the line of scrimmage and create lanes for those running backs to run through. Empty backfield, you think maybe quarterback draw here? Heaves it. Receiver fell down. Cunningham was on target. Harrell was running open in the scene. Card's just a bit unlucky right there for us. And he had exactly what he wanted. He had his receiver down the scene. He threw a strike. His receiver just fell down. And a good job by the offensive line once again. I thought Cunningham could have put a little bit more on the football. The receiver had to make a small adjustment, and that's how he was. That's how he lost his footing. If Cunningham puts a little bit more on the football, the receiver's still running right now. Jade Smith back deep to receive this punt for Mark Bassett. And end over end. Fair catch called for and made at the 16 after a punt of 31. EKU trailing. Fans are back. Crowd has returned for the first time in over 650 days. Last time we had this many people here was a win against Syracuse. Dump off pass goes nowhere. And Trey Clark, who came up with the pick on the last possession, forced a three yard loss here for us. And number six, 17, Kiki McFadden has to do a better job on the outside. You've got to help your teammate out. You've got to get that block. You cannot allow the defender to have free reign to your teammate. Was that Clark that was banged up on the tackle? Well, Dakota Allen made the reception. He lost three in the process. Injury tucking that tackle. Certainly good news there. Keytrail Clark had the interception earlier. And a big TFL. And that pitch and catch to the tight end. Third down and long coming up for EKU. Force Connolly, Roy Philpott. Let's see what the Colonels try to dial up here. Deep in their own territory. Louisville defense standing tall so far. They've done a good job on this drive. They got a good play on the a big play on the first down, getting the tackle behind the line of scrimmage, 
and a good job of penetration by the defensive lineman. Can they get pressure on McKinney? Hewitt in the backfield. Kenny going to try to buy a couple extra seconds. Nothing doing. Pass is incomplete. Three and out for by the Louisville defense. And there was nowhere for McKinney to go with the football. Louisville rushed three. They dropped eight back into coverage, kind of mirroring what Eastern Kentucky has been doing to the Louisville offense. There was nowhere for McKinney to go with the football. I think he did a good job. He got outside of the pocket to see if anyone could get loose. He had nowhere to go with the football. He did the safe thing, throw it out of bounds, live to play another down, punt the ball, play field position football. Per year and Diaby trying to chase down Parker McKinney. A busy night so far for Philip Richards. Special teams. Braden Smith makes a man miss towards the pylon. Can he get there? Yes, he can. A touchdown for the cards. Lightning in a bottle grabbed by Braden Smith. Heart, determination and athletic ability on that play. Louisville special teams rock solid tonight, covering a muff punt in the first quarter. That led to a quick score. A 50-yard punt return for a touchdown in the second quarter. Another six. And Turner banks home. The extra point. No, he missed it. And it's almost as if the EKU defenders no thought they were just going to make the tackle or he called, you know, for a, a, a fair catch because they kind of stop. And then you see him get to the outside. And once he does, it's just athleticism, speed, and willing himself to get across the goal line. You see right there when the ball's bouncing, they kind of thought he was just going to let it go. He did a good job of fielding the football. And once he gets to the outside, he makes the moves to get down the field. And then they thought they were going to push him out. And once again, he willed himself to get the ball across the goal line for the touchdown. Wanted to see more from the receivers tonight. Braden Smith, one of those players, didn't happen on offense, but it did happen on special teams. And right now, as you said earlier, Roy, special teams is winning Louisville this ball game. The recovery on the muff punt and now the return on the punt. So after the miss extra point by Turner, who scored 13 to nothing, and now a very critical possession for EKU. McGlure and Ross back deep to receive this kick from Brock Travelstead. And Ross waved for the fair catch. Colonels will have it at their 25-yard line. And around the Atlantic Coast Conference today, a couple of big out-of-conference victories. Virginia toppled Illinois in big fashion up in Charlottesville. And you had Pittsburgh over Tennessee for us. And that was an entertaining game and a big win for head coach Pat Narduzzi. And I think for the ACC, this has been a very good week. We know last week they talked about the ACC being down because of some of the losses. When you look at Miami, nobody's beaten Alabama, so that wasn't a big deal to me. I thought Florida State, which nobody gave a chance, played Notre Dame very tough, but we're still out on what Notre Dame really is because they had a tough ball game today against Toledo, winning by three points. And Clemson, they lost to Georgia, and Georgia right now is looking like one of the best teams in the country, if not the best team in the country. Bottled up. Door. And Adula got there in a hurry. Number 22 in red and white. We well, love the helmets this evening for Louisville. Patriotic look. The 20th anniversary of the terrorist attacks, World Trade Centers in New York City. We've seen a lot of that around the country as we've gone through this day. There's some great reporting done on game day this morning, and certainly our thoughts and prayers remain with everybody in the Big Apple that was 
Affected 20 years ago today. It's third. Third down for EKU. Malik Clark to stop the interior of that Louisville defensive line. And Louisville now is bringing four down linemen, bringing four guys up the field. They feel confident with their ability to cover on the back end of that defense with seven defenders. Card show pressure, here they come. McKinney gets rid of it, contact. And here comes a late flag. That'll be P.I. and a first down for EKU. Took a while, but I think they got it right. Pass interference, defense, number 21. That's an automatic first down. Brady Vance, a true freshman. And he played through the offensive player. And a good job by McKinney staying in the pocket with pressure all around him to deliver the ball down the field. But you see right there, he got there before the ball did and ran through the defender. Just wait until the ball gets there and try to knock the ball down. But don't play through the defender. And he'll get better with that as he gets older and more mature as a player. Jaron Mitchell, the intended receiver. Number nine to play in our first half. Louisville leads Eastern Kentucky 13-0. First meeting in two seasons. McKinney off a of play action. Matt Wilcox has a first down into Cardinal territory. He was tripped up by Kendrick Duncan. Duncan, excuse me. And with the cushion the Louisville defenders are giving these receivers on the outside, the quick pass game has been very successful. And once again, you have to refer back to last week's ball game against Ole Miss and the mishaps on the outside and them not feeling comfortable. Now they're playing up close. Gain of 19 yards. Glor bottled up. Stopped at the line. Yasir Abdullah. When 22 gets going, he becomes a lot of fun to watch. And he flies all over the field. He flashes. As I said before, he didn't make a lot of tackles last week, but he was very disruptive with his ability to bring pressure his ability to flash, his ability to make the offense, I think, react more so quicker than they wanted to. Carroll City High School down in the Sunshine State, second down and 11. Reaching the halfway point of our second quarter. McKinney off the back foot. Somehow had enough strength on that pass, zipped it in there for another first down for the Colonels. Hugh Cole was there in coverage, but that'll move the chains. And McKinney was retreating, but he still found a way to whip that one in there for us. And Coach Brown in this Louisville defense has to work on their tackling. That is a, a, maybe the fourth tackle I've seen them miss on the outside when the receiver gets possession of the football. And Clark missed the tackle that time. That's a gain of 17 more. Around the flats, Jaden Smith. Lasso from behind. Around the 24 by Fago. Now EKU's found a rhythm. And it's that quick pass game. When you give so much cushion, all the receivers have to do is take off from the line of scrimmage. The defensive backs are turning and running. When they turn around to find the receiver, he's wide open. Floor motions out. Here's McKinney. Pressure off the edge. He'll step up. Send one deep. End zone. And out of the reach. His intended target is tight end Dakota Allen, former quarterback for the Colonels, now playing tight end this season. And McKinney climbed the pocket on that play. I thought he had an opportunity to run on that play because they were in man coverage. We had a safety shading over to the side where McKinney was trying to go at the football where he had a matchup advantage with Dakota Allen at six foot four. But I thought he had an opportunity to run the football on that play. Colonels need five. From the 24 on third down, McKinney directing traffic off the pump fake. Can he get there? No, he can't. Ushered out of bounds. Mon Monty Montgomery trying to get a fingertip on him. And now it's fourth down. You kick the field goal, I guess. 
Yeah, you have to get the points. But you see McKinney right there. He wanted to go with the football. He did not have anywhere to go. He did a good job of pulling it back. I thought he could have thrown the football right at the end of that play. He had an opportunity to get the ball down the field. He did not feel comfortable. And when you think about it as a quarterback, you want to make sure you get something positive out of this drive. So I think when he saw his receiver, he said, you know what, let me pull back. Let me see if I can get the first down. If not, let's try and get the field goal. Left-footed kicker Patrick Nations from 39 yards out. And he'll bang that one through. And EKU on the board for the first time. Make it a 10-point affair. A good possession for the Colonels. Louisville's defense finally surrenders some points. For Walt Wells, year number two as the head coach in Richmond. He's got to be pleased with this start despite the fact they've had interception, muff punt, and they still have a chance. Well, they found a little bit of a rhythm with the quick pass game. I think when they go in at halftime and they look at what they've been successful with, I think that's something we see more of. Now, my interest is to see if the Louisville defense adjusts what they're doing on the outside with coverage. Will they continue to give those cushions that they're giving to those receivers, or will they get up in their face, jam them at the line of scrimmage, play a little bit more press coverage on the outside? Well, Scott Satterfield, year number three underway. Berkeley going back to receive this EKU kickoff. Along with Hassan Hall. Busy day of football around the Atlantic Coast Conference. We told you about Pittsburgh and Virginia handling their business earlier. Clemson's all over SC State tonight as expected. Another big game involving the conference over in Starkville, Mississippi, NC State and Mississippi State. Finding Dave Dorans trying to give the league another victory and out of conference play. And Berkeley keep it alive ahead of the 29. Don't forget, coming up later on tonight, 11 Eastern, the huddle. Quartet of Jordan Cornette, Eric McLean, EJ Manuel, Mark Rick. Be back with you to complete all the breakdowns and Full analysis of all 13 ACC games today. The Huddle over on ACC Network, also the ESPN app, one app, one tap. And the Cards will get it back with a 10-point lead. And some more Malik Cunningham on deck. Anything you want to see different out of this Cardinals offense on this possession for us? I want to see them establish the rushing attack. Okay. I have not seen them establish a run, a, a complete rushing attack. I want to see more dominance at the point of attack by the offensive lineman. Cooley in the backfield. To that point, Louisville only 10 yards rushing so far. We'll add to that total. Gain of five, maybe six. Stopped by Kyle Bailey for EKU. And when I say dominance, I mean the backs not seeing a defender until they get to the second level defenders. Also, I want to see these guards be able to get up in those alleys and cover up some of these linebackers. Cooley on the sideline after that six-yard game. Yeah, nothing has come easy tonight. This Cardinals offense. Right on cue, a first down pickup for Jalen Mitchell. Eight-yard gain. Tackled by Jaden Woods. Cards off and running, trying to close out this first half in strong fashion. Yeah, talking to Scott Satterfield this week, he said, you know, we really we're not panicking after one game. Guys went without pads all week in practice after the first turnaround. You see the rushing numbers from the last few seasons. And he has a calmness about him, I think, that has permeated through the rest of this roster. Louisville went back, looked at the tape, realized what went wrong on defense against Ole Miss. And by the way, Rebels going to do that to a lot of teams this year with Lane Kiffin, that explosive offense, and Matt Corral. And I think, too, we talked about it early. You know, this is a very young roster. 72% of this roster are underclassmen. So they're rebuilding this program. Cunningham loses a yard. It'll be second down. Flips it out to Mitchell upended. Yeah, to that point, we were talking with Coach Sat yesterday. And in his office on the whiteboard, they've got their full depth chart. And the freshman players are all listed with red magnets with their names on it, of course. And he said, look up there at the depth chart. You're seeing a bunch of red. Those are all freshmen. And they got basically 70 
first-year guys. Now, you got the COVID year, so it's a little different, but still, there's a lot of youth with the program. That's the point. Well, what comes with that is an understanding right now, but a year or two from now, an expectation. So that's what they're building towards. Third down and seven. Big play for Cunningham. Pass is caught. Josh Johnson has it. His first grab of the night. That'll move the sticks down in EKU territory to the 35. And that's the patience that the coaching staff was looking for from Cunningham. Watch all the pressure. But he stays in the pocket. And that split second that he stays as opposed to escaping, he's allowed his receiver to find an open space, make themselves a big target for him to get down the field with the vertical passing game. Gain to 21 on the play. Louisville finding their rhythm once again. They'll flip it to Johnson. Second touch in as many plays. Makes a man miss. Josh Johnson far side. Into the red zone, and the card's in business. Hayes escort him out of bounds, but uh, Louisville finding something with number 11. And that was a great play on the outside by the tight end, Marshawn Ford, number 83. He stayed on his block, which allowed the receiver to get around the edge and get up the field. That's what you have to do. Ford did a great job of staying on that block, allowing Johnson to get to the edge and get up the field. So he touches the ball twice for a combined 41 yards. Pocket breaks down, Cunningham trying to escape, and he does. Fortunate to get back to the line, and he'll be stopped right there. You know, Dawson was plugging the hole in a hurry, 94, Kelton Dawson. All of his buddies were right there ready and waiting, too. And Cunningham had his tight end wide Did open he? on that play. At the back of the end zone, nobody covered the tight end. I think he wanted to go there, but the pressure got to him, and he covered the ball up to make sure they didn't knock the ball out of his hands, but he had what he wanted on that play. But a good job by the EKU defense getting pressure on him. Look at the tight end, wide open in the back of the end zone. But he had so much pressure, he couldn't get the ball down the field. I mean, that was the, the backup backup. Yeah, he was there. Cunningham on second down, buys some time. And stopped just short of the six. It'll bring up third down and short. Eli Hairston in the area. That's a gain of eight yards. And he's such an elusive player when he gets outside the pocket. One of the things that makes him such a special player as well is he throws the ball extremely well on the run. So defenders, although you want to go up and attack that eye candy we talked about, you have to stay back and play your position and play assignment football. Until he crosses the line of scrimmage, you cannot go up the field to try and make the big play. Dwayne Martin checks in, 45 for Louisville, trying to add a couple of extra pounds in the backfield. And Mitchell bottled up on third down. And off to Jalen Mitchell. So and Walters no with the tackle, that'll bring up fourth down for us. And once again, no movement at the point of attack. When you get down in short yardage and goal line situations, you go back to what you do in practice, pushing the sled. You get down. Look how many guys are standing up tall. That's why they're not getting movement. You've got to be the low man. You've got to basically bear crawl. Get into a four-point stance and uproot those defenders. More beef up front. Isaac Martin checking in, 41 in red and white. Diamond formation for the Ville. Let's see if they call a timeout on fourth and short. And EKU will do exactly that. So 59 seconds remaining in our first half. Scott Satterfield elected to go for it here. First off, do you like that decision? I think you kicked the field goal because they kicked the field goal. You kicked the field goal, you're still up 13 points. Um, you want to get something positive going into the half with scoring. You want to have three scoring drives. I don't like this because if you don't get this first down, now you give some momentum to this EKU team going into halftime. And they get the ball to start the third quarter. So suddenly a big sequence for head coach Scott Satterfield. And I understand challenging your offensive line, but I think if you're going to go with this play, you run it old school, line up in the I formation, hand it to your tailback, have your fullback come up in the hole, and you block people, and you play old school football. None of that cute fancy stuff that we see teams doing a lot now. Don't pitch it back you know, five yards and take a two-yard gain uh, 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 where you need to get two yards and make it seven yards. You know, come straight downhill with your power back. Mitchell on the field on fourth and one. Let's see if the offensive linemen 
of the low man. The low man will win. Marshawn Ford will flank Cunningham. Hand off Mitchell. Didn't need much. Did he get there? Headed across the four-yard line, and he did. It'll be first down and goal. And still, the offensive linemen are standing tall. That play was made by Mitchell. It wasn't by the offensive lineman. Mitchell did a good job of finding the hole. Cunningham will keep it to the end zone for the touchdown. Second score of the first half for number three in red. And Louisville extending its lead here right before halftime. And you see Cunningham fake the football. He pulls it out the belly of the back. He sees the end crash down, and he knows what to do with the football when he gets to the outside. Turner one for two and extra points tonight. Make it two for three. Lead at 17, 47 seconds remaining. And that's such a difficult play for the defense to defend when you've got a guy like Cunningham in the backfield and his ability to cut to the outside. Well, we take you back to the first quarter and the first big play of the evening here at Cardinal Stadium. Muff punt by Wilcox. Dallas jumped on top of it. Three plays later, Louisville reaches pay dirt. It was Cunningham on a busted play. That made it 7-0 in the interception by the Cards. Followed by the punt return by Braden Smith from 50 yards out for us. And you see him once he gets to the outside, just catch him if you can, and he wheels himself across the goal line. And then Malik Cunningham, once again, you see that athletic ability. How do you defend that when you've got a guy that fast, that quick, with that much athleticism? He does the right thing, sticking the ball in the back's belly, pulling it out when he sees the end crash down. And when he gets to the outside, you know, he's just too nimble, and he gets to the end zone. Hey, the back doesn't even have to be there. He can be on his backside, and he finds a way to score, like we saw earlier tonight. Cunningham 10 of 16 through the air, Buck 9 A couple of scores on the ground. Brock Travelstead sends it deep. Now, this is kind of what you wanted to see after a tough loss Monday night. Didn't go the way that you thought that it would, especially in that first half. A little dicey maybe the first 15 minutes this evening, but Louisville's kind of flexing at the end of this first half. Well, EKU came in, and they competed early in this ball game. And, you know, now Louisville is starting to kind of have their way at the point of attack, something we expected a little bit earlier in this ball game. Uh, but I still think EKU's in this ball game. They've had some positive plays. They've just had some things go in a negative manner as far as special teams. That's been their downfall this evening is special teams play. Yeah, losing the turnover battle. 2-0. Fortunate to be down only 17. McKinney pulls it out. Powers is way ahead of the 29. That'll be about it on first down. Clark, the tackle. Five-yard pickup. Colonels do have two timeouts remaining. And not operating with a sense of urgency here. EKU will get it to start the second half. So to have a chance to get back in it, you got to think they got to score on that possession. It's funny, another quick turnaround for Louisville next week. Friday night, UCF's in town. Scheduling guides didn't do this program any favors. 2021 with who the Bill will see late in the season and the three games start in 12 days to begin this campaign. Cards with 173 total yards in the first half. The defense was tough. And a 20-3 lead at the break. First home game at full capacity in two years. Cardinals trying to bounce back after a tough loss. They are on their way here in Louisville tonight. So what we witnessed Labor Day night against Ole Miss. All right, for EKU. Of course, they're hanging around, only down 17. What do you need to see on this first possession? I think you need to see ball control on this on this position. Okay. I want to see them run the football effectively. You know, get your fits. Make that Louisville defense react to what you're doing. And I think then they will be able to get down the field with the football with Parker McKinney. 
but they're getting pressure with three defenders. They've got to force Louisville to bring more defenders down into the box and bring more defenders on a pass rush so he can have some lanes to go down the field with the football. Lore the running back for EKU from their own 25. Kenny will clap for it. Laura will switch sides. EKU just 100 yards of total offense so far tonight. Won't gain very many more there. Montgomery to tackle on the quick toss to Allen. Check that Johnson with a catch. Be second down to 10. And you see Montgomery's ability to get to the outside and make the play. If he doesn't make that play, the offensive player has a lane to get up the field. That's what makes him special, and that's what this defense missed last week in that game against Ole Miss. Lord gets it. And just like that, it'll be third down. Hey, the music guy starting to get fired up in the second half. You heard some tunes there between plays? Okay, starting to feel like football again. Cards standing up. UCF comes to town Friday night. Another quick turnaround for Scott Satterfield's club. Six in the box for Louisville. We'll fake the blitz. Time for McKinney. Got to hurry. Needed to cross the 35. It depends on the spot. That should be enough to move the chains. First time we've called C.J. Avery's name tonight. He could prevent the first down. And a good job by McKinney. He did not hesitate. He saw a lane. He tucked the football. He knew where he had it to get to to get the first down. I thought that was a good, quick decision by McKinney to tuck the ball and run and get that first down for his ball club. Quick toss, Mo Edwards bottled up. Back to the line and that is all for number 16 in white. And once again, you've got to get better blocking on the outside. Something that receiver coaches talk to their receivers about all the time. Just because the ball doesn't come to you does not mean you're not involved in the play. Can't even fake the snap on second and ten. Wilcox will make it third down and short. This EKU team a year ago, of course, nearly pulled off an upset against an FBS team down in Troy, Alabama. Against the Trojans, had a lead late on a late touchdown toss before Troy kicked the game-winning field goal at the buzzer so this is a program he's got the ability to pull off the upset on occasion after the nine yard game McGlory will try to get to the edge he cannot get there Duncan Abdullah prevent the first down and the Louisville defense has been rock solid so far and I think McGlory has to understand you cannot go east and west against a defense with as much speed as Louisville has you have to go north and south when you go east and west you allow for the team to rally to the football and bring you down. You allow for pursuit to get there. You've got to get north and south. Great Smith already a punt return for a score tonight. You got to be careful kicking to number four. Richards end over end forces Smith to call for the fair catch. Punt of 37. And the cards will get it The Mitchell. Join him in the backfield out of that pistol set. Of course, Connolly Roy Phillip out of the call tonight. Louisville trying to even its record at one and one. Mitchell with a jump cut, spin move. Six, maybe seven on the play. Of course, you and I were talking during the break. You know, the comparisons to Lamar Jackson are always going to be there at this school. And you can see Cunningham flashes that at times. But he ain't Lamar Jackson. Nobody is. I mean, that's no. a once-in-a-generation kind of player. He's the MVP of the NFL. But... Cunningham still has a lot of good football left in him. And I think you would argue he's got a chance to leave here a very special player. Absolutely, but he has to continue the development. Speaking of special, Mitchell plus territory. Shoved out of bounds at the 48 by Salas. And Louisville in business suddenly on the ground. Louisville has a bunch of moving parts in their pre-snap. 
and the defense has to react to that. But you see poor tackling at the point of attack. They had an opportunity to bring the back Mitchell down in the backfield, but you've got to make that tackle right there if you're number three, Quentin Floyd. You cannot try to arm tackle Mitchell. He's a big, powerful back at 5'10", 220 pounds. And Coach Chat said we got to get him more touches tonight. They have done that and then some. Here's Braden Smith. He's been active as well with a punt return for a score. Game two here. I mean, you can see it with Cunningham. Last year, Louisville beat Western Kentucky in week one. Miami came to town in week two. There was a lot of fanfare. You know, what can he be? I don't know what he can be, but I think the potential is certainly there. And they worked on his pocket presence in the offseason, didn't show up week one. The last three quarters, it's starting to show up a little bit more. Well, he's got a lot on his shoulders. When you lose as much production yeah. as he lost in the offseason with guys going on to the NFL, you have to find your new playmakers. So along with him continuing to progress and get better, I think his playmakers have to show up. And that's something we talked about earlier, the coaching staff was looking for. They want to see some guys step up to the plate with production. They wanted to see some more out of Braden Smith. They wanted to see some more out of Justin Marshall. They wanted to see some more from Jordan Watkins. So far, Smith has given you that production. We saw in the punt return, but you need to see more from the offensive set from those individuals. And yeah, leading receivers, actually, Josh Johnson had this two quick touches for 41 yards in the first half. Smith's production, as you mentioned, coming on the punt return. Cunningham sensing the backside pressure, extends the play, shoved out at the line. And that was Nick Cheely, his second big play of the night, 11 in white. Check that number 10 in white. And it's fourth down. And watch the offensive tackle. He does a poor job. He opens up that outside shoulder, giving up a short corner to the defensive end. You cannot open up that outside shoulder. If he did not and he protected the quarterback, there was someone wide open down the field for Cunningham to go to with the football. But you've got to keep your shoulders square. You've got to get three kick steps back. At that third kick step, you're at the quarterback's level. You can then turn, open up that shoulder, and run that defender past the quarterback, allowing him to step up in the pocket. What I've heard from you tonight, you have not been as impressed as you want to be with Louisville's offensive line. Well, the offensive tackles, they aren't doing a good job on the outside, keeping those shoulders square, and the guards and the centers aren't doing as good of a job as I thought they would being stout at the point of attack and punching. I see too much catching, allowing the defender to get to your body. As an offensive player, you cannot catch because when a defender gets to your body, now they can take you and do what they want to do with you. When you punch, you're knocking them off their track, and now you can react and you can power step. So what they're doing, they overset sometimes. They can't get back inside for that power step for those inside moves, and when they open that outside shoulder, they give a short corner to those defensive ends. You kind of sound like a former offensive lineman from somewhere in the ACC. I, I don't know. Call, call me crazy, Morris Connolly. <laughs> now, Appalachian State trying to hang around with Miami. Close game at halftime. Big win for Wake Forest. Back to live action. McKinney will pick up a first down. He scampers out of bounds near the 30. Clark was in the area, but a big gainer. 17 yards for EKU. With a good read by McKinney. He puts the ball in the belly. The defensive end crashes down. He reads that defensive end. Abdullah and gets up the field. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. You read that in. The end determines what you do with the football. That was fake hair, by the way, right? That was fake hair underneath the, the headband. Oh, man. <laughs> Whatever it was, it was interesting. <laughs> Kenny's pass incomplete, trying to spot his tight end and former quarterback, Dakota Allen. Be second down. And Dakota Allen is a player that the coaching staff identified to us as a guy they wanted to get more involved because they thought he could get vertical against this Louisville ball club, and they talked about his soft hands. And being a former quarterback, he understands coverage concepts. Making that transition for the offseason. Kenny will try to get out in front again. Four-yard pickup will make it third down at six. Avery and Montgomery. Right there to make sure he couldn't go any further. And let's see what they try to dial up for the Colonels right here. The EKU is lining up after every play, getting on the football. They're not necessarily going with the fast-paced offense. But what that does is it does not allow for Louisville to make substitutions because of the fear that they may go fast. 
EKU, three of eight on third down tonight. Pressure, McKinney, pump fake. Sideline delivery. Give him one, maybe two, and that's it. And the Louisville defense stands tall once again. And Brad Davis, number 79, got away with the hole right in the middle of that offensive line. Watch number 79. He gets away with the hole right here. He's holding the defender. <laughs> I don't know why the officials are, uh, how the officials did not call that. He got away with one on that play. Second catch for Mitchell, well short of the line to gain. And say what you want to say about just a 17 point game here in the third. Louisville's defense has set the tone this evening. So is this man, Braden Smith. Smith at 27, but also in college football. Pass away this past March. First home game for the Bills since then. They commemorated his great career here. Sticker on the back of the helmet, back to live action. Pass will be caught. Smith has it. First big play in the passing game tonight for the Cards. You checked out it was Huggins Bruce with the reception. You see Cunningham, he goes with the ball fake. He looks down the field and he sees his receiver and he leads him. If he throws the ball a little bit more vertical, I think the receiver has an opportunity to score because he got good separation from the defender. All right, Huggins Bruce, that's a 40 yard gain, longest pass play of the evening. That'll open things up. Got to think for the cards on the ground. Second grab for Huggins Bruce. Cunningham all night. Take off. Ushered out near the 30. And that was Jabari Anderson after a four yard game. A good decision by Cunningham. The offensive line did a good job of blocking on that play. That he had so you like there. the line there? I like that play. Right. I like what they did on that play. They got good fits on that play. They gave him time. He did not see anything that he liked, and he got what he could out of the play. Did not throw it into coverage. You have no beef with the scheme that we've seen, just hat on hat. Let's be a little bit more dominant than we have been at the point of attack. They should be, absolutely. Okay. Just trying to talk the old lineman game there for a minute. Tunnel screen towards the end zone. Justin Marshall. Touchdown Cardinals from 30 yards out. Well, we wondered where would the big plays come from for this offense this year. No more 2-2 Atwell. Des Fitzpatrick has moved on to the league. Who's going to step up? Well, 18 has done it. Nine has done it. Four has done it as well. Turner missed a PAT back in the second quarter. It's otherwise been a perfect start to his season. 27-3, our new score. 5.30 remaining in our third quarter. And Marshall just shows you I am a better athlete than any of the defenders around me on that play. You know, I'm just going to show you what I can do. You see right here, Cunningham looks to the left, looks off the safety. Then he throws back to the right to Marshall. And Marshall, once he plants that foot and gets north and south, it's catch me if you can. A great job on the outside by the offensive lineman getting up the field. The receivers did a good job of blocking as well. You see them clearing the path for Marshall to get up the field. Brian Hudson, number 61, the center did a good job of getting to the outside and getting that clear out block, which allowed for Marshall to go in untouched to the end zone. He's got a couple of catches tonight, had seven grabs a year ago. Started three games, played in 10 for the Bill. His first touchdown of the season for number 18. Been a fun night. Cards will be back at it next Friday night with UCF coming to town. Primetime matchup. And perhaps a bit of a stiffer test than what we've seen so far. Ross back deep to receive. This kick from Brock Travelstead. He'll take it out. Ross at the 35. So a good return. Travelstead, the kicker, made the tackle. And now EKU's got a score, and they got a score in a hurry for us. Well, I think for EKU, you can't try and get it all on one play. 
you still got a quarter to go along with five minutes and 24 seconds left in this quarter. But you've got to establish some type of rushing attack. You've got to do something to influence these Louisville defenders to come down into the box so you can get some man coverage on the outside and try and go down the field. But that does not happen until you establish some type of rushing attack. Rushing attack hasn't been there, just 46 yards on the ground. Screen pass far side. Sneaking his way up near the 40 is Matt Wilcox. Mentioned EKU coming off the win at Western Carolina last week. They trail late in the second quarter in that one in Cullowee before mounting the comeback. Kenny, a big reason why. Haven't called Hewitt's name a lot. The Purdue transfer at running back. McKinney's going to be intercepted. Picked off. It's Clark again. Keytrail Clark. Second pick of the game. Second of the season. And he'll set up Malik Cunningham with outstanding field position. He read that one right as McKinney got the snap. Well, Matt Wilcox did not do a good job helping his quarterback. Number six, you've got to come back to the football. You can't not wait for the ball to get there. Watch number six on this play. McKinney eyeballs his receiver the whole time, but the receiver has to come back to the football. Attack the football. Don't allow the defender to attack the football. Clark, attack the football. Watch the receiver. He stops. You've got to attack the football. You know where the ball is going. You've got to go back to your quarterback and help him out, especially when you've got tight coverage like that. Talked to Brian Brown yesterday, and he told us, hey, we were in position against Ole Miss. Believe it or not, we were. We feel great about our scheme. We had to have our eyes in the right place, especially in the defensive backfield. I think Clark has shown tonight eyes are in the right place. He's not buying the eye candy out there. Well, he watched the quarterback, McKinney, the whole time and read the play. Jet sweep action. Huggins Bruce trying to sneak around the edge. Hey Roy, if I'm Coach Satterfield, I'm running the football right now. Okay. You know, you've got a 24-point lead. Uh, you're, you're looking like you're going to win this ball game. I want to see more from my offensive line if I'm Coach Satterfield. Mitchell straight ahead. He'll pick up a first down inside the 35. Just telling you a little bit about Brian Brown and you know talking to him this week, so enthusiastic and just ready to just get back out there to show what this defense could do. Second half really didn't get any stops against the Rebels Monday night. It's been a totally different story this evening. And it should not be understated. You're playing against the Lane Kiffin offense last week. So there's so much to prepare for. It's the first game of the season, so you have really no film to study to prepare. Yeah. You know, you come into a ball game kind of guessing and hoping you know what they're going to do and, you know, hoping to be able to make adjustments as the game progresses. And you think about this week for him, too. He's a former Ole Miss player. So he knew a lot of guys on that staff, knew a lot about the roster. And obviously, deep ties there in Oxford. Mitchell tripped up. Near the 32 by Walder. As time winds down here in our third quarter. And although it's third and seven, I still run the football. I want to challenge really? this offensive line. Because you've got tougher opponents. You've got UCF coming in here next week. You know, after that UCF game, you're at Florida State. You're at Wake Forest. And down the line, you're at NC State and Clemson back-to-back -back weekends. You have to be able to run the football if you're going to win those conference games. Did I tell you I don't like the schedule? Cunningham escapes. A little high step, pump fake. And a couple of defenders miss. After all that, it'll be fourth and maybe a yard or two. That's what Cunningham can do. Pressure applied by number 11, Salas. And fourth down, you said you wanted to see him run it on third. They found a way to do it. Now they're going to go for it, right? Absolutely. And if it weren't for Cunningham, that would have been a sack. But once again, his athletic ability, his escape ability. So here we go. 
And an EKU defender in pain on the ground. So less than two to go in our third quarter. We'll keep it here. That's Matthew Jackson appears to be banged up. I mentioned the Louisville schedule. Three games in 12 days to start the season. Culminating next Friday night with UCF. And you hit the nail on the head. You're at NC State the next week. You got Clemson back here in kind of the meaty part of the schedule. And then, by the way, you got Boston College, no slouch, and Virginia is off to a 2 0 start then. So, I mean, it looks pretty tough, especially even with the crossover opponents you got this year. So, when you get an opportunity like you have in this ball game, I think you work on some of the things that you have not been doing well so far early in this season. And that is running the football effectively. That is getting good fits from your offensive linemen. That is giving your quarterback. We, we know that they wanted to work on the quarterback on Malik Cunningham being more patient in the pocket. I think he's shown that this evening, uh, staying in the pocket, not escaping when he feels any kind of pressure. So he's done a better job with that. But the one thing I don't think that they've seen is that offensive line get the push that they're going to need to get as they progress through the season. The defense has stepped up to the plate and gotten some turnovers. The special teams has done a good job. The offensive line, I think, is what they want to see more out of in this ball game. Now you got a red shirt freshman got to start tonight up front, right tackle. You got a couple of juniors, a fifth year senior. You got some true freshmen that are trying to make their way up the depth chart. Michael Gonzalez comes to mind at one of those tackle spots. Really probably graded the best after that Ole Miss game. Played about 40 snaps. See Caleb Chandler there. You know, fans don't like to talk about it. Announcers, especially like myself, don't get into it. But the O-line, really important your overall success. It'll be first down and goal for the Ville. Mitchell stopped by Dalton, and now Jalen Mitchell starting to get a big night going. And a good job at the point of attack by number 56, Renato Brown, getting that seal block, allowing for the back Mitchell to get to the outside, get the edge, and get up the field. 17-yard pickup there. Cunningham pulls it out, fakes the toss. Get a couple. I never talk about the offensive line. Like, I almost make it a point not to. But the analysts I work with, Usually former quarterbacks, former offensive linemen, they played offense somewhere. Inevitably, they get to it, and I have to listen to it. But you're doing a great job tonight. I'm buying what you're selling. <laughs> I am. Well, I'm well, all that's all stars, Roy. Right? <laughs> if you don't dominate at the point of right? attack, I know it. You, you can't get it done. I don't I care know. how special you are back there. Hey, look, we saw it with Clemson week one against Georgia. Couldn't Absolutely. block anybody. Georgia had seven sacks. Tigers had two rushing yards. Bounce back today against SC State, but a little bit of a different opponent. Mitchell fell down, grabbing the handoff. And that was Jaden Woods. Third and goal. And I wonder if you sprint Malik Jackson, excuse me, Malik Cunningham outside the I see what the you pocket. did there. I see what you did there. <laughs> Lamar, Malik, good players. I see some similarities. His escapability is very Lamar Jackson-ish. Trying to get their snap off before the end of the third. They will. Jackson. Check that Cunningham. Pass is incomplete. Too much zest on that pass for Tyler Harrell. It'll be fourth and goal in the first play of our fourth quarter. Back at Cardinal Stadium. Fans trying to get into it, making a little noise. Got the fans and the cheerleaders back in the stands and on the field this season. That's always a great sight. Turn her on. 28-yard field goal attempt. He'll bang it through. It's good. First play of the fourth quarter. Louisville strengthening. It's lead up to 30 to 3. Forrest Connolly, Roy Philpott. Been a good day for the ACC so far. A couple of close games going on in the nightcaps. And don't forget, coming up tonight, 11 Eastern, the huddle. We got Jordan Cornette, Eric McLean, E.J. Manuel, Mark Rick. They all get back at you with a complete breakdown of all 13 ACC tilts today. The huddle, ACC Network, also on the ESPN app, one app, one tap. The time is now. Make sure you have it downloaded and looking at Big Mac on that screen. He's another former lineman. And every time I'm around him or I was around him back in uh, the day at Clemson, 
talking about the big uglies. And so I, I listen to you guys. I just don't ever focus on it. Calling a game, man. That's just like a personal flaw. What you have to understand about offensive Give line, it to man, me. We are the only position on the field that every single play is designed for us to hit someone. Okay. So we got to go find work. Defensive linemen, sometimes they drop back into coverage. They do all kind of trickery. Well, for offensive linemen, we have work on every single play. That's why we are the most important players on the field. All over. Pressure. Third quarter, Louisville crush EKU out getting the Colonels. Buck 45 to 43. All comes out for the 25 and Parker McKinney line. will go back to work. First EKU down. has yet to find the end zone tonight. And Louisville. That defense has been the reason why thus far. Of course, Connolly, Roy Philpock, great you could join us. Your biggest takeaway from the league tonight or today, Pittsburgh over Tennessee, because Pat Narduzzi's team kind of looked impressive. They held off the balls. A lot of fans down there in Knoxville. I know Virginia routed Illinois. That also was pretty impressive. But I got to think Pitts win kind of the marquee victory of the day so far. Well, you got an ACC team beating an SEC team. That's news after last weekend. That's what you like to see. Kenny Parker throws that one way under the refs. And we know it's not the top of the food chain for both conferences, but it's a start. Okay. And I think that's a good start. And Narduzzi's building something there at Pittsburgh. Nobody ever talks about Pitt. Nobody ever talks about Pickett. Nobody ever talks about Narduzzi. And that's a team this season has got a chance to win the coast. Right? Well, the coast is wide open right now. It always we is. We don't know what Miami's going to be. North Carolina, I, I think the jury's still out on those guys. So it's going to be interesting as that unfolds on the coast in the coastal division. Direct snap to Hewitt, little trickeration. We'll toss it back. And after all that, Wilcox is going to be close to a first down. That's one way to pick up first down. He has to recognize that and call a hot route on that play. You have to audible out when you've got plays that are long developing those were long developing plays he had a bunch of receivers going vertical on that play but those plays need time to develop when you see the blitz package when you see the linebackers walking up on the line of scrimmage you've got an audible out of that scott satterfield and brian brown gave us a great quote on gelati and they said you know what he's as strong as an ox for a true freshman that's saying a lot 27-point lead for the Bill here the Derby City. The score tells the story for us, Connolly, Roy Philpa. Veteran officiating crew taking a last look at that sequence. Our replay official tonight, Keith wrote it. And for us, you know, in baseball, they say every time you go to a baseball game, you're going to see something you've never seen before. What I was just told is accurate. This is something I've never heard before. And that is they're checking to see if that punt was actually executed on third down. <laughs> That's just what I was told. <laughs> but you see Coach Satterfield talking to the officials. And, you so, know, if I'm Coach Satterfield, I'm like, hey, it's not our fault. <laughs> you know, we got possession of the football. It should be our ball. The officials, I hope that's not the case. So the holding penalty, I think, created the confusion because there was a big gain in the plus territory for EKU, but it was negated because of the holding call. Well, the holding call, it's not loss of down. You replay the down so they're having to dig deeper into the archives here try to make sure they're dotting eyes and cross and t's the right way and i'm going to tell you if they missed it we sure as heck missed it and uh, my deepest apologies but i i don't know this is new for me well it's human error and if they did it <laughs> you know hey we're going to charge it to human error okay now this will be interesting and perhaps set some kind of weird precedent now you wish on that five down sequence that happened, what was it, in the Nebraska-Colorado game back in the day? All right, so let's see. We'll try to press rewind ourselves. This was the first down play. Now, this was the big gainer that was negated by the hold. Then it still should have been first down, and I remember it being second and 11 after the penalty. So that's where the issue occurred. Oh, man. And you see the officials walking back down the field with the football. Yeah, so watch this. Off to the edge, the spin move. He's going to take this all the way inside the 50. 
Holding penalty stops that. On the next play, they called it second down and 11. It should have still been first down. First down. Oh, man. This is Sports Center, not top 10 or I don't know. It's something. It's not good. That Louisville punted on third down. We're going to correct it, go back to the previous spot, and replay third down. It'll be third down for Louisville at the 33-yard line. For EKU. For EKU. Yeah, he, me he messed that one up. Yeah, so, and by the way, the loud cheer you heard the same time that we heard from Riley Johnson was due to a funny guy on the Jumbotron. Doing the belly Get down dance. a little bit. Yeah, Doing he was getting down. That's, that's, that's the weirdest two and a half minutes I've experienced on live television ever. Well, everybody dropped the ball on The Clued coaching us? staffs. Including us. We should have caught that. Because the EKU coaching staff should have caught that as well. Yeah. All right. So negate the punt because they punted on third down. The officials corrected the mistake, which doesn't really seem like they should be able to do it, but they did. And after all of that, EKU gets it back third down and 14. Now, with all that being said, EKU needs to convert this third down. I mean, you would think something cosmic is in the works here. Pressure, McKinney, slant. Nice stop at the 41. McKinney's Cole the tackle. Gets Benardzik. And a nine-yard gain on third and 14. So we're going to do this thing all over again. And a good job by McKinney. They brought six on that play, one extra. And he did a good job finding the open receiver. If the receiver is able to make a play and break a tackle, he has an opportunity to possibly get a first down. It's still Saturday night, right? We haven't entered a wormhole of some sorts, and we're on That's a different plane. Right. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know. Richards gets it away cleanly. Smith calls for the fair catch. And it's down inside the 10. Ball down. It's for realsies this go around. Louisville gets it back after this. Awarded a scholarship back on August 20th. Bill gets it back for us. Connolly, Roy, Phil, by you played at Florida State. You were telling me. You remember when that went down in the day, back in the day in Tallahassee, early 90s? Yeah, it wasn't as much fanfare because you didn't have social media, but we had a guy that showed up on the defensive line that we went to Chuck Amato as a veteran offensive line and said, Coach, I don't know who this guy is, but you need to get him a scholarship. That guy ended up being Andre Wadsworth, huh. the number three pick in the God. draft. <laughs> he, was a, he, was, he was a walk on? He was a walk on. Are you on. kidding me? Yes. I was getting ready to joke and say, was it Peter Bulware? But no, Wadsworth, that guy was a yes. beast. I mean, he was an animal. Absolutely. And the thing about it, if you don't have Ryan Leaf and Peyton Manning come out in that draft, he possibly could have been the number one overall pick. I mean, how did somebody not find him? There's so many diamonds on. in the rough. I mean, you, you just don't know. Yeah. Still not sure that we survived that last sequence. <laughs> I think we did. Holding penalty. Trevor Reed, starter at left tackle. He was challenged this week by this coaching staff. Coach Satterfield told us Trevor probably didn't play his best game, and he was kind of gave way to Michael Gonzalez at times against Ole Miss Monday night. But he had a great week of practice, number 70. And he felt good about him making the start again tonight. Screen pass batted down. That was dangerous. Third and long. Shane Burke snuck in there. Pick number 92. You see per year. That's got to be a great field. You walk on, and he's contributed the last two seasons. You heard it from Coach Sapp. But you finally hear that, hey, you don't got to pay for school anymore. That's that's pretty slick. Well, a lot of times guys are overlooked, and, and sometimes guys don't get the offer that they're looking for, but they get what is called a preferred walk-on opportunity, knowing if they go out and perform and do well, they have a chance to earn a scholarship. Cunningham needs 12. He'll get that and a lot more. Wide open. Big play. Huggins Bruce. There he goes. 
Amari Huggins, Bruce off to the races. Pay dirt is there. 95 yards for number nine. And there's a question of did he drop the ball before he got across the goal line? He dropped the ball before he crossed the goal line. Prematurely celebrating. Watch where he drops the football. You've got to cross oh, the no. goal line. You cannot do that. Come on, Bruce. The football before reaching the goal line in the end zone. Premature celebration. Touchback. And that play is under further review. That's the worst. There's nothing to review. He dropped the ball on the two-yard line. The fans don't like it, but he's going to have to answer to Coach Satterfield. This will be on Sports Center. You cannot oh. do this. It's, it reminds me, was it Deshaun Jackson that did this? <laughs> You've got to get across I the mean, goal he's line. He's at the two-yard line. That wasn't <laughs> even close. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And a good job by the defenders knowing what was going on and trying they, they saw it immediately but the ball rolled out of bounds well if the ball rolls through the end zone it's a touchback and EKU will get the football back mm. Huggins Bruce has never scored a touchdown he's a true freshman out of Dillon South Carolina and that's going to be one that stays with him for a long period of time and for coach Scott Satterfield that will be a teachable moment. And you mentioned Deshaun Jackson. That was 08 Monday Night Football against Dallas. Mm -hmm. You just can't do that. You've got to keep your head in the game. Too often guys are looking to celebrate or do the cool thing with dropping the ball. You've got to get across the end zone. This is a business. You've got to make a business decision. Make sure you score the touchdown before you drop the football. Great individual play until he got to the goal line. And as you said, he's a freshman. He will learn. This is a teaching moment. Premature celebration will get you every time, my friend. That's tough. That is tough. We'll take a look at this, of course, of the boot. Keith wrote in our replay. After official. further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. No touchdown. EKU gets it at the 20-yard line. If this game was close. That's an enormous deal. I mean, you love the burners. You love the Jets here. I mean, well, this will be a weapon for a long time here at the Bill. You saw a great route. He sits down. He catches it, and he just turns up the field, and he turns on the speed. Catch me if you can. If we even, I'm leaving. And he gets to the two-yard line. Blunder. He drops the football. <laughs> I mean, that's cringeworthy watching the highlight before it's great time. It, it gets worse every time I see it. Because, yes. like you said, it's one thing if he's right at the goal Pass line. Pass interference. Defense number 13. That's an automatic first down. Well, don't let that sequence, that play, negate from what's been a solid Louisville outing in this bounce back game. Petrell Clark called for the P.I. This has been a wacky fourth quarter. Play order. through the receiver. Play the football. He's got inside leverage on you. Go ahead and make the tackle. Kenny right back to the line of scrimmage. It's been a wacky fourth quarter. I was thinking we're coasted on in. We got a punt on third down that was reverse. We have what appeared to be a 95-yard touchdown negated with the receiver tossing the football behind him at the two-yard line well before he crossed the plane to the goal line. I think we have something else special that's going to happen in this fourth quarter. I'm scared to ask what it's going to be. Kenny. Second down, will pick up the first. Powers ahead of the one three. Okay, K, the stop, not before he picked up 12. And as far as a rushing attack, McKinney has been the only one to really have some type of positive yardage. We haven't seen Hewitt like we thought we would. I thought with his ability to run as a power back, we would have seen more of him. But we haven't seen him carry the ball as often as I thought we would. He's got three carries for six yards. Transfer out of Purdue. Pump fake McKinney. Mitchell, the 
plus territory. Turns something out of nothing. Clark sent him out of bounds. And one thing I've noticed about both defenses, there have been some poor tackling. Like you've got to wrap up. You can't just hit guys. Too often I see guys trying to make the big hit instead of tackling. You've got to wrap up and you've got to get these guys down. You can't just hit a guy and think they're going to fall down. Gain of 15. McKinney kind of guided that one to 81 in white. It worked. Brian Brown and Louisville are trying to get out of here. Keeping EKU out of the end zone. Great slow with a carry. Right? I mean, that's a big deal, especially after what happened Monday night. Not able to get off the field in the second half. Brian Brown, defensive play caller for Louisville. You turn right around a couple of days later, keep him out of the end zone. It's a big win. And it's kind of difficult when you have such a short week of preparation because you don't want to overdo it with your guys playing on a Monday night and then coming back and playing on a Saturday night. Yeah, they didn't practice in pads all week. Make sure the guys were fresh. Pass sales incomplete. Bednarczyk, the intended receiver, third and long. And they've been successful springing McKinney out of the pocket, which I think gives his receivers more time, more time for the play to develop, and more time for those guys to find open areas to make themselves a big target. And also with his ability to run the football, which he's done successfully at times tonight, it makes those defenders step up to try and make a play on him which I think will also open up opportunities to get the ball down the field. And that play will be stopped. Delay of game. On the penalty. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. I mean, your first career touchdown is right there. It's right there. It's a sick feeling right now. He's Man. not feeling real good at all. You know, and, and then a part of that feeling is the, I'm sure there's going to be some disciplinary action. Some I mean, stadiums. what do you do? I mean, so you're you're, you're making them run. You're going oh, to run stadiums. the steps. This yeah. stadium right here, there's a lot to do. <laughs> About five of these, I think he won't drop it anymore at the two-yard line. Yeah, and the good news is, look, he's a true freshman. He's, he's going to make a fair share of big plays. Kenny somehow got rid of it at the last possible moment. Atkins be stopped near the 42. Cameron Wilson, a linebacker, deep off the Louisville depth chart. Keep it at a five-yard gain. Fourth down coming up. Is this a real punt? <laughs> you never know. Is this right really fourth down? With this game. <laughs> you just never know. Is it fourth and fourth and nine or is it fourth and seven? Is it still Saturday? Yeah. <laughs> Double checking. Braid Smith, what a night it's been for number four. Punt return for a score. Three catches. Had his first career touchdown Monday night against Ole Miss. An eventful week. Braden Smith. Interesting there during the break. I mean, this guy was rocking out to Easy E. That's the first time I've heard Easy E played. At really any venue I've called a game at, Evan Conley, the new Louisville quarterback. I mean, I, I dig it. It's just not what I expected. Who is that, Mr. Wrestler number one? I mean. <laughs> he's, he's jamming, man. That's his jam. He's having a good night. Hassan Hall with the carry. Our first look at Conley, sophomore out of Marietta, Georgia. Down there at Kell High School. Hey, good start tonight for Malik Cunningham in all seriousness. I know the offense took maybe 15 minutes or so to get in gear. Muff punt. Three plays later, Cunningham reached the end zone. And, uh, you know, it's the kind of game you want to see from your starting quarterback. Third year pretty much as the starter. Son Hall with a full head of steam. And the numbers, I mean, look, numbers for us, 15 to 23. Buck 83 and a touchdown for Cunningham. Scored twice on the ground. Okay, you work with that. You can win games with that. Well, what people have to understand sometimes, too, when you're playing against an FCS team, it can be a tough ball game because you're expected to win. You're expected to dominate. And you've got a team that comes in with nothing to lose, so they're going to give you everything that they've got. And then these are two teams in the state of Kentucky. 
So you've got some guys that may have felt like they could have played here at Louisville University that were overlooked, and this is their opportunity to step up to the plate. Huggins Bruce stepping up after the terrible mistake. Hey, I, I love the fact he's still on the field. I love the fact they try to get him the football right there and just get his confidence going back where it was two yards before he dropped the ball crossing the goal line, right? That sounds good, but <laughs> he still dropped the ball at the two-yard line. Man. How about Hall? That's another player you're trying to get back the good side. That fumble on fourth down Monday. I mean, he's got all kinds of different gears that he can get to. Talking about Hassan Hall. And what I like is they're keeping the starting offensive line in the game. Okay. They're continuing to work on getting good run fits. You can't get good looks like you get in a ball game in practice because you're not going as hard as you would and you're going against common competition. This is uncommon competition. So they have to work to get those fits and work on their positioning. So I like the fact that those guys are still in the ball game. Conley's going to throw it. Double coverage nearly picked off. A lot of contact. Huggins Bruce, the intended receiver. Bailey was ready and waiting. A couple of his teammates were as well. And a good job by the offensive line on this play. You saw Conley. He's able to sit in the pocket, set his feet, throw a really good football. There was just better coverage. They had Huggins Bruce bracketed on that play. So he did the best that he could to try to get possession of the football, but that was real good coverage by EKU. Yeah, Davion Ross is right over the back of him on that play. Give me a sense on what to expect Friday night with UCF because Gus Malzahn, his team's going to come in undefeated 2-0. Comeback win against Boise State week one. They pummeled Bethune-Cookman tonight after trailing early. They've got 49 on the board in the third quarter as a last check. You know, Dylan Gabriel, great quarterback, left-hander, throws a great deep ball, new offense with Gus. But not, a, not an easy team to play on a quick turnaround once again, right? Well, I think with this win under their belt, uh, the fan base will get excited. I think you'll have a packed house Friday evening national TV game. I think it's an opportunity for Louisville to, you know, put themselves back in the conversation of being a team to look out for a team that's growing and getting better. Once again, we talked about 70% of their team being underclassmen, so this is a young team. They still have to gel, but I think they will be up for that ball game, uh, and they know if they win that game, they put themselves in the conversation because everybody will be watching Friday night. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, this place, when it's packed, I mean, it'll get rocking here in a hurry. We saw that four or five years ago, Mar Jackson years, of course. But when Louisville was challenging Clemson, and there were some epic games between those two programs. And, you know, I live in South Carolina, so you would hear it. Clemson would come back, and people couldn't stop talking about the environment. Iowa over ISU in perhaps surprising fashion. Cyclones a slight favorite in that one. New quarterback is Cord Sandberg. Speaking of slight favorites, I mean, I, you hate to bring this up, but we do have on our own network a segment called Bad Beats. Scott Van Pelt, I'm calling you out right now because this could be the worst one of all time. The thrill of winning and the agony of defeat. <laughs> Louisville was, was a 30-point favorite in the game. Oh, I mean, they... They do have that really big city with all those big buildings in the middle of the desert for a reason. I mean, that's got to be one of the all-time worst, and you're going to hear about that for a long time on SVP. So, Scott, yeah. have at it. And uh, well, there's an EKU, it is what it is. There's an EKU fan right now that's really happy. <laughs> that he dropped that ball on the two-yard line. And there's some people right now that are really angry. <laughs> I mean, of course, it does line. not get worse than that. <laughs> I hate to keep harping on it, <laughs> but come on. But Well, I think what made it bad is usually when a guy drops the ball, they're right at the goal line, and you have to really look at it. But he was at the two-yard line. I mean, that's bad beats from now till the end of time. Sandberg gets it out quick. Good-looking play. Under two to go now in our fourth quarter. 
Big win for Louisville tonight, Central Florida. Prefer to be called UCF, comes in town next Friday night. And we will see what Dylan Gabriel looks like against this improved Brian Brown defensive team. Defensive play caller for the Bill. And he'll have a lot to coach from eight quarters in the books now in this 2021 season. And what shouldn't be understated is these are two former Sun Belt coaches that will be playing. You've got. Yeah, Scott Satterfield from App. And then Gus Malzahn was at Arkansas State. That's true. It's been a weird fourth quarter. It's been the weirdest fourth quarter I can remember. Right up the gut. Sloan, the big gainer. EKU will go back to work. Record of fall to one and one. Scott Satterfield. Breathe a little easier after this one. This is kind of what the doctor ordered. And there's a lot more positives to take away from this ball game. And I know we've harped on it a little bit, the blunder, but I think Huggins Bruce has a bright future with Very this bright. program. Yeah. Uh, the speed that he showed on that play, the awareness to know where to turn to get up the field. I think he has a bright future with this little bit program. Well said. See if that's the final play of the night. Start to finish, the Ville, the better team, as expected, heavy favorites. And they will build some mojo. Headed into week number three in UCF. Scott Satterfield, even his record, 13 and 13, midst of his third season. Walt Wells, year number two down in Richmond. Make the quick trip. And that'll do it, 30 to three, our final score. Cards putting up good numbers on offense as they find a way here in their home opener. And they did what they needed to do. They wanted to get a win. Uh, they wanted to see some things from Malik Cunningham. I think they saw what they needed to see as far as being patient in the pocket. Uh, I still think they've got some work to do on the offensive line. They've got to get better fits. He's a young kid. You don't want him to get down. He made a mistake. You don't. It's okay to make mistakes. It's human error. But you don't want to make those mistakes in bigger ball games when you need those points on the board. So I like the fact that they're coaching after the game is over. Tell them, hey, you made a mistake. It's going to be all right. You learn from this and you get better. Blake Cunningham. 15 to 23, 183 yards and a touchdown through the air. And now two more on the ground. He joins us down to the end zone as we speak. Malik, congrats on the win. And I know what, took a little time for the offense to get going. What did you see out there as you guys started to find a rhythm in the first half? Uh, yes, we uh, started a little slow, but um, that just comes with uh, just preparation. Uh, but I give thanks to the to God, for, first and foremost, and the O-line. Uh, they started a little slow, but they, they picked it up. We've been working on that uh, in practice, trying to pick the tempo up. But those guys on the edge made a lot of plays, and without the guys up front, I wouldn't be able to do what I did tonight. Well, Malik, one of the things the coaching staff talked about is wanting to see you be more patient in the pocket and allowing plays to develop. Do you think you did a good job of that this evening? Uh, yes, sir. I feel like I didn't have to run as, as much. Uh, I ran like a couple times, but majority of the time I was trying to stand there and uh, find guys downfield. But, if, I mean, NC uh, eventually take over. Malik, you got UCF coming to town Friday night. You got to think the atmosphere here is going to be pretty electric. What's your expectation for that matchup? Uh, yeah, it's a very good football team, well-coached team. Uh, they're going to be juiced up and ready to play, and so are we. So we're uh, looking forward to it, a short week of practice, and we're going to be ready to put on a show Friday night. Congrats on the win. Go celebrate with your teammates. We appreciate it. <laughs> a little love from his head coach, Scott Satterfield, as he exits the field. That's always a good sign. 33, our final score tonight. Here at Derby City, Cards will even up their record at 1-1. One one. EKU falls to 1-1 one one as well. My man, Forrest Connolly, I'm Roy Philpott saying so long. Cards, big winners here at home. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, people like Geico because it's just easy. Bundling, for example. You've got car insurance here and home insurance here. Why not zoop, put them together? Save even more. Geico. Rob 
power is an iron fist. Ram power puts it in a velvet glove. Raw power lifts with its legs. Ram power also lifts with its brains. Raw power gets it done. Ram power does what's never been done before by anyone. Discover Ram Power during Ram Power Days. Right now, get 3,550 in total values or get 0% financing for 72 months on the 2021 Ram 1500. In a relentless world, connected but alone, trapped by illusion. But there is another path where the battle to belong begins. Here's today's hot and perfect tip. Run in place at all times. Don't follow extreme routines. Do your own thing at Planet Fitness with tons of equipment and free fitness training. Join now for $1 down, $10 a month. Cancel any time. Hurry, you'll end September 16th. At Saucy, we are more than beer. We are chefs, artists, and biologists. We are Wednesday morning taste testers, problem solvers, and fashion models. After three years, we've opened five locations and continue to create more jobs in the communities we love. We push beyond the walls of our brewery and into the world of coffee. Our mission is to forge new opportunities and push the boundaries of innovation. And we want those who are passionate about our mission to help us continue to grow. Become an investor and join thousands of others who have entered the saucy state of mind.